Chapter 13, Part 2, Contingencies and Current versus Long-Term Liabilities. Loss Contingencies. Now, what this is all about is what happens if we something's happened in the past that could affect future revenue. What we need to do is, well, we need to account for it depending on our ability to determine how real it is. So we're going to want to accrue it, but again, it depends on the likelihood that the confirming event will occur, what can be determined about the amount of the loss. So U.S. GAAP requires that the likelihood that the event be categorized as probable, reasonably possible, or remote. So the rule usually is, is if it's probable, you have to accrue for it. If it's reasonably possible, you have to mention it in the footnotes. If it's remote, you ignore it. Now an example of a contingent liability are product warranties and guarantees. Most consumer products are accompanied by a guarantee such as a quality assurance warranty. Cost of satisfi satisfying guarantees should be estimated and recorded as expense in the same accounting period the products are sold. This is a loss contingency. Now we're going to look at an example. Danny Company sold 10,000 flashlights during 2021 at $500 each. Very expensive flashlights. The estimated warranty expense is 1% of sales. During 2021, Danny spent 15,000 servicing the two-year warranties that accompanied the flashlights. All applicable transactions are on a cash basis. So, we would book the sale, and since we don't have cost of goods sold, we won't book that, but normally you would if this was perpetual, which it probably would be. Book the warranty liability, which is 1% of the sales. Book the warranty costs, we take them against the warranty liability account. And what's the balance in our account? Well, it would be 35000 at the end of the year. Now, what about a gain contingency? A gain contingency is an uncertain situation that might result in a gain. Gain contingencies are not accrued. This is an example of conservatism. We record uncertain losses, but not uncertain gains. But if we're pretty sure, material gain contingencies are disclosed in the notes of the footnotes. So, then let's take a look at loss contingencies. Now, the rule again is, if it's known, if it's probable, and it's known, and can be reasonably estimated, we're going to do a, a journal entry and disclose it. If it's reasonably possible, and it's known, and it's reasonably estimated, we would have to put a footnote. And if it's remote, we do nothing. Now, when loss contingency is accrued, it would be loss litigation, which is an expense, and liability litigation, which would be a liability. Now, when the actual loss is resolved and lower than the contingency, we're going to put gain litigation, which would be revenue, because we have to reverse that loss out that we booked previously. But since these are estimates, they're treated as a change in estimate, so we would book whatever happens when it happens, even if it goes between multiple years. So let's take a look at an example. My company is defending against a lawsuit in year one. The company believes that it's probably they will lose with an estimated range of a million to four. With any payment equally likely in that range, the final settlement was 700,000 in year two. Now, what they don't include is your lawyer fees, which would probably be a lot more than 700000 Now, loss contingency. GAP requires that the loss is probable the low end of the range of equally likely outcomes be accrued. Now, just so you know, under the international standard, it's the mid-range. So, under the international standard, you would accrue the midpoint, which would be $2 million. But in the case of GAP, we would accrue the $1 million. Okay. In year two, since we only paid seven hundred thousand, what we're going to do is take the balance of three hundred thousand off the books, and we're going to book a gain 
litigation, which would be part of revenue, other. Now, what if they were involved in a lawsuit and they're reasonably certain that they're going to get 500000 Again, gain contingencies are not accrued under GAAP. A disclosure note is appropriate if the amount is material. Now let's take a look current and non-current classifications. Companies typically prefer to report an obligation as non-current rather than current because of its effect on ratios. Non-current classifications result in higher working capital and higher current ratio. Now one of the things you got to think about though are callable options. The requirement is classified currently maturing debt as a current liability if the debt is callable due on demand by the creditor in the upcoming year operating cycle even if the debt is not expected to be called. When the creditor has the right to demand payment because an existing violation of a provision of the debt agreement makes it callable. The debt is not yet callable, but with a callable within the year if an existing violation is not corrected within a specified grace period. So these are the requirements that say even if you have long-term debt, you have to treat it as a current asset. So let's take a look at an example. Now, in December 31st, 2012, my company had 40 million 12% bonds that mature on October 31st, 2029. Bondholder has the options of calling the bonds on October 31st at a redemption price of 40 million, but market conditions are such that such a call is not expected. Well, the rule is you're going to have to treat that as current. It doesn't matter if they're expected to call it. So, in this case, this $40 million would be treated as a current liability. Two, my company intends to refinance $6 million of 10% notes that mature in May 2022 with a line of credit they have negotiated for $5 million with any borrowing maturing in two years from the time of the borrowing. Now, in this case, we'd have to break it out because we have $6 million but five million we don't have to worry about for two years but one million we would have to put as current so short-term obligations that are expected to be refinanced with long-term obligations can be reported non-current only if the firm intends to refinance actually has demonstrated the ability to do so based on the arrangement they can classify five million as non-current and one million as short term Now, what's the difference between GAAP and the international standard? Well, under U.S. GAAP, liabilities payable within the coming year are classified as long-term liabilities if refinance is completed before the date of issu issuance of the financial statements. Under the international standard, they have to have already been refinanced before the balance date of the financial statements. That ends part two of this chapter 13 presentation. Again, if you have any questions, email me.